Okay, guys, see ya after October. What's up, Jellies? Welcome to episode three of my Ruby redesign series. Here I analyze the outfits of Team Ruby post volume three and try to redesign them to fit my taste. You can see the other videos in the info tab above or the description below. This episode will contain Myler spoilers for Ruby volume three, four, and seven. So if you haven't watched the show, this is your spoiler warning. The third character I'll be working on is Beastly Beauty, Blake Belladonna. Blake is a cool cat faunus with a dark past serving as a member of the White Fang, a faunus freedom fighter group that has strayed from its original mission. When she and the current leader Adam Taurus have a falling out, she leaves for Beacon Academy to become a huntress that helps others in hopes of redeeming herself. In the first three volumes, Blake wears a black and white ensemble to show the duality between her dark past and the bright future she strives for. The sharp lines made overall by her coattails, lace, and ribbons add danger. Her black armbands and gradient stockings put emphasis on her cat-like limbs, while her big bow adds an element of cuteness and hides her faunus identity. The small magnetic backpack is convenient for holding her weapon when not in use. Finally, the pops of purple on her leggings and eyeliner bring some color to the monochromatic outfit. This look is edgy, but darling. After the time skip following the fall of Beacon, Blake goes to Menagerie, remnants equivalent of Australia, to reconcile with her family and take refuge from the White Fang. What makes her outfit unsatisfactory is that it really doesn't reflect the environment, nor what was set up visually for her style. The close-fitting trousers, thigh-high boots, and white tailcoat are inappropriate for the hot climate. The large coat itself covers details of the crop top, obscuring her legs, and the white takes away from her branding as quote unquote black the beast. Her trousers are also the same color as her boots, making the separation between the two garments hard to discern. She also stands out amongst other residents of Menagerie, and even against her parents, which is antithetical to the goal of laying low. Since my goal was to design a garment that allowed Blake to fit in, I made it more casual so she could fit into any part of the island. She wears a crop top and shorts to fit the warm climate, but short boots to run and jump in the more urban areas. To reference her older look, I gave her armbands and a sash that trails behind her like her old coattails. In addition, I gave her a hood to conceal her identity when she's sneaking around. In Volume 7, after bringing the White Fang back to its roots, reconciling with her family, and defeating Adam Taurus, Blake and Team Ruby reemerge as full-fledged huntresses to fight the big bad. If you thought I was a hater last episode of the Volume 7 outfits, I'm worse now. 
Black in Volume 7 suffers from the same problems as Weiss. The color choice goes against the character's branding, and the shape language feels off. Aside from her hair and weapon, there's no black to be found, and the shape of her haircut is too round, making her look soft and demure instead of sharp and dangerous. Although the coattails are kept as a consistent motif, the zipper details get lost in the movement, and having unzipped parts of the coat doesn't make sense to me since Blake is supposed to be sensitive to the cold. I have a strong dislike for the purple zipper catsuit. I don't respect it. For this design, I changed the cut of the coat to give more coverage since Blake is used to warmer climates like Menagerie and Vale. I also gave her a hat and gloves to protect her ears and hands. Since Blake is a stealth character, I made the main body of the outfit white so she could sort of blend into the snow, but made her sleeves and pants black so the audience could still track her movement. I also readjusted her hair to make it sleeker instead of that arm and arla yee ass haircut. In addition, her weapon has more lines of gold on the blade and gold accents on the hilt. The gold stripe on it was supposed to represent the Japanese kintsugi method of fixing broken pottery with liqueur dusted with gold, but it's barely visible. So I added more. I also added gold accents in general to represent her connection to Yang. I like doing outfit coordination with couples. If you haven't noticed by now, this is a video process from my stream because I forgot to record a time lapse on Clip Studio Paint. Luckily, I had footage on my stream showing the process through VODs. If you want to see more of my process live, follow me on Twitch. I do VTubing now. So there you have it! What do you think of these redesigns? What would you have done differently? Thanks to Aaron Good for allowing me to use his Ruby 8-bit covers for background music. You can find his channel in the info card above or the description below. For future redesign videos, please like and subscribe and click the notification bell for update alerts. Stay above the water!